less than 30 days before his death, Jesus crosses paths with a blind beggar just outside the city of Jericho. Now, before I actually get into reading our text from Luke chapter 18, we want to consider the question, what do we actually know about this guy that Jesus runs into? Luke supplies very few details to us. But from the details that he does give to us, we can actually construct a pretty vivid portrait of who this man actually was. We learn right out of the gate that life had dealt this poor man not one, but two impossible debilitating circumstances, blindness and poverty. Now, in ancient times, it was sad enough to be born blind. But if you're born both blind and wealthy, A blind man could have used his wealth to provide for himself certain comforts that would have helped him to deal with the darkness and the sadness and the depression associated with his blindness. On the other hand, for this guy to be born both blind and poor, that was a cross that was almost too much for any one person to bear. The second thing we learn is that he's a beggar. He couldn't work and obviously his family is doing nothing to support him financially, so he has a choice. Beg or starve. And he chooses to beg. This is obviously the type of life that no person would ever ask for. The third thing we learn in this text, however, is that this blind man has faith. He has faith that Jesus is the Messiah, and it's that faith that ultimately heals him later on in the story. And I have to wonder, where does this man get his faith? Now, the text, it doesn't tell us where he gets the faith, but I think we can venture a pretty educated guess. This man obviously gets his faith not from something that he can see because he's stone blind. This man must have gotten his faith in Jesus through his ears, through something that he could hear. Now, I can imagine that as this man sits in the same spot every day, year after year, begging, that he's he's using his ears to listen to all the stories of the passers-by. And it must have happened that as people are walking by this man, he overhears them talking about this man, Jesus of Nazareth, who has miraculous healing powers. And, and you can imagine that he would have been inquisitive and asked them, tell me more about this man. And over time, the accumulation of all these stories start to build some type of faith in his heart that this Jesus is not just a, a, a miracle worker, but that this Jesus is actually actually the Messiah. Perhaps one day he hears a story about how Jesus was healing the lame and maybe even that he helped the blind to be able to see and that's all he needs for this for this faith to build up in his heart and he surely must have chosen at some point if the rabbi ever passes by me I'm going to cry out to him. I'm going to call out to him. I'm going to make him stop in his tracks because if he can heal other people surely he can hear me too. And so this is what we know about this man and now let's read what Luke tells us as we find out what happens when Jesus crosses paths with a blind beggar. Let's begin reading in Luke chapter 18, verse 35. As Jesus approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard the crowd going by, he asked what was happening. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. Now, I'm going to pause here for a second. The blind man is probably sitting at his usual spot. Maybe some friends carried him there and left him to beg there all the day long. But today, he he hears an unusual commotion passing by, and he probably feels the trampling of feet. And so he asks the passers-by, what's going on? And they tell him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. And you can only imagine the the flashbulbs that must have been going on inside the soul of the blind man. And now his faith becomes active and so active that it actually activates his voice. And he cries out. Let's keep reading. He calls out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And you have to see that him calling Jesus by the title Son of David is actually a confession of his faith. Nobody was calling him Son of David. They called him the Son of Joseph or Jesus of Nazareth. Calling him the Son of David meant that the blind man was actually uh, correlating Jesus with the Messiah who would be a descendant of the line of David. It showed he actually had faith that Jesus was more than just a man. And so he cries out, But Jesus' handlers and his listeners and his disciples, they don't want Jesus to be interrupted in the middle of a sermon. And so the story continues. Those who led the way rebuked the blind man and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. 
aren't you struck by the simplicity of this man's prayer? He has a very basic, simple need. He needs mercy. And he just he just asks for that. He uses the, 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 he just speaks from his heart and he uses words that just float out naturally and easily and simply the most basic way he could possibly muster to make his request. And I want you to know you can do the same thing right now, today. You can use the most simple, basic, plain, ordinary vocabulary that you have and present what you really need to Jesus. And I promise you, he's going to stop dead in his tracks and listen to you the same way that he does for the beggar. Let's read on in verse 40. Jesus stopped and he ordered the man to be brought to him. When he came near, Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? Lord, I want to see, he replied. Jesus said to him, then receive your sight. Your faith, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and he followed Jesus and started praising God. And when all the people saw this, they also praised God. How simple and plain is this man's confession? He doesn't use one word too many. He doesn't use one word too few. He he just simply says, Lord, I want to to see. There was no stammering. There was no stuttering. There was no hesitation. He wasn't afraid. He was moved by faith. And that's all it takes for Jesus to say, I hear that prayer. Go. Your faith has healed you. And instantaneously the man sees and he follows Jesus down the road. I don't know where you are in your faith journey today, but let me ask you a question. If you've made it this far into this video, is there something tugging at your heart that says, I know I don't deserve anything from God and I don't even have faith, but I believe Jesus can save me. Or maybe you're you're struggling over something in your past and, and, and right now you're feeling a tug in your heart that says, yeah, you know what? I, I believe Jesus could forgive me. Or maybe you have strong faith and you've made a decision to follow Jesus, but you find yourself in a really tough situation. And maybe there's a little voice in your heart that's saying, I believe he could do something about my impossible situation. Here's my encouragement to you. Listen to that voice. Listen to that voice right now as it speaks a little bit louder and as that little voice encourages your heart with the thought, with the thought that says, come to Jesus. Bring him your blind heart. Bring him your poor heart. Unload to him your impossible situation. I promise you, he's not going to turn you away. He's not going to turn you away. In fact, as I end this video, I want you to imagine Jesus, he's standing next to you right now. He's passing by your way. I want you to imagine the Savior stopping right now and looking right into your eyes and asking you this question. What can I do for you? What would you like for me to do for you today? And then I want you to just open up your heart and spill it out to him. Just lay it out there for him. Just raw, honest, simple basic. Tell your Savior what you need today. Ask him to have mercy on you. He's not going to pass you by. He's just going to present himself to you with outstretched arms saying, come to me. Let me bring you rest. Let me bring you peace. Let me bring you healing. Let me give you forgiveness. Let me overwhelm you with mercy. Let me bring my solutions into your impossible situation and you just enjoy your Savior taking care of you. At least that's what this passage says to me. I'd love to hear what it says to you. So why don't you take a moment right now and drop in the comments what this passage says to you. God bless you guys. I love you. I'm praying for you. God's here for you. Your church is here for you. And I'm looking forward to spending a little more time with you over this next week, looking at the final week of Jesus's life.